Chapter 35 In the morning, Flora was the first one outside. This was going to be a hard day. She might as well have a moment to herself while she could. The new sky showed points of light, stars that weren't ready to leave their place yet. Like little eyes, they were watching and blinking from high above the world. She thought of the stars looking down on her mother and brothers and Luna on the farm, and she wondered how two such different places could exist in the same world. If she ever went back, what stories she'd have to tell. Rat hunting, captain rescuing, and now? She, paused, she pawed listlessly at the snow around the sled runners. Her coat felt like a second skin, and she was warm. But nothing could warm up her thoughts, which had turned chilly. No way could Oscar pull that sled for another day, even with Al Alaric helping. The problem was, Oscar would try. There was no quitting that dog, and he would pull and pull until he died. If Oscar didn't make it back to camp, if this little trip failed, it wouldn't be a disaster for them alone, Flora blinked. Was the captain wondering why they had deserted him? Maybe the sailor's leg would get better and he'd hobble out to look for them. Maybe he'd stumble over their frozen bodies. Then at least the captain would know they'd been trying to help. See, the sailor would say, they reached the supplies just didn't have a sled dog strong enough to get them to us. Sled puller, she corrected him in her mind. Flora grunted, her snout tingled. She looked up again at the stars. Where are all these terrible thoughts coming from? She walked away from the sled and stared back at it for a long time. Flora couldn't change the cold or the snow or whether someone thought of her as food, but she could believe in herself again, just as she used to. By the time the others were ready to go, Flora was in place. Oscar dragged himself out of the tent, looking as if the night's sleep had not helped much. He glanced around, confused when he couldn't see his harness on the snow. He wandered over and sniffed Aelric's empty line before seeming to wake up to what was going on. Oscar got in Flora's face and growled, This is not a job for pigs. We're not playing now. We're working here. When Flora didn't move, he snarled and snapped at her. Flora stepped sideways. This was not good. She wasn't going to be a very strong sled puller with teeth marks in her snout. She quickly slipped out of the harness and hurried to the back of the sled. Aelric packed the tent, pots, and other equipment, then hooked himself and Oscar up to pole. The go going was easier today. The crust of ice on the surface of the snow had firmed up in the night. The sled runners ran more smoothly but Oscar still stumbled at times. Aelric was on the side of him pulling and Flora walked along the other side, but a little bit behind, so she didn't have to face Oscar's anger again. She was glad to see Aelric change course to go around the hill they had slid down. On this new path, the ice crystal ended and the land gradually sloped upward. After a few minutes, the, the snow softened again and the sled got stuck in a small snowdrift. Aelric slipped out of the loop and went to push. Flora didn't hesitate. She ran and nose Aelric's loop of uh, rope around her neck. She'll just have to bite me, she said to Oscar. He lifted his lips to show his teeth, but he was breathing so hard he couldn't do much more. When the sled was freed, Aelric walked to the front. He laughed, ho piggy, you're a funny one. Listen here, pigs don't pull. We took the loop off Flora and put it around his own shoulders. You just be sure to make it safely back to the captain because he would never forgive me if something happened to the pig that saved his life. Flora wished she could talk in a way that Elric understood. Instead, she walked patiently behind the sled and when it got stuck again, she walked to the front as Elric went back to push and slipped into the loop. Oscar's sides were heaving. His legs trembled and he made no move to stop her. This time, when she felt Elric pushing, she pulled with all her might. Her hooves dug in, and the sled jerked forward. Sophia yelled in surprise. Whoa, called Elric. Flora looked back, but didn't stop. Sophia was standing up to her stomach in soft snow where she had jumped off the sled, and Elric was on his hands and knees, not expecting the sled to move so quickly. 
Floor face forward. Step, step, pull, pull. Pigs don't give up. Elric came running. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He pulled back on the rope until the sled stopped. Then he knelt down and scratched floor behind the ears. This can't be happening. You're really pulling the sled, you and Oscar. He took the rope off Laura's neck and she was afraid he was going to tell her to go away. But instead he adjusted the loop, making it the right size for her. Then he rummaged in one of the food boxes until he came up with a soft cloth that he placed around the loop so that the rope wouldn't bite into her skin above her coat. There we go, then pig. He patted her on the shoulder. I guess the captain was right. It's hard to know where brains and talent are going to come from. Let's see if this can really work. Flora pulled all day. It was hard, but the sled no longer got stuck. She had little idea where she was going, but Oscar obviously knew. Even though he couldn't pull very hard, he would growl and tug in certain directions to correct their course or snap at her shoulder to push her the other way. Sophia ran up now and then encouraged, and then to encourage Flora, but most of the time the cat stayed on the other side, keeping Oscar's spirits up. Flora was sad to see it wasn't working. The dog's head drooped further and further. His rope often went slack for long periods while he walked and heaved. Flora was afraid to talk to him, so she just kept pulling. They stopped at the end of the day, close to the giant chunks of ice that Flora remembered from the trip out. She barely had enough energy to eat before crawling into the tent to sleep. Her tired muscles ached. Her shoulders were sore where she had pulled against the rope, but she felt a glow of pride deep in her bones. Sophia curled up next to Flora's cheek and whispered, You were amazing. We could never have made it without you. A little while later, Elric came in carrying Oscar. He laid him down, crawled into his blanket, and blew out the candle. All was quiet when the dog got up and stumbled back outside. Where's Oscar going, whispered Flora. I guess he wants to sleep outside tonight, Sophia mumbled. Flora listened for his breathing or some sound that would tell her he was lying in the snow close by but there was nothing. Finally, she dragged her aching body out of the warmth and into the night. Sophia didn't stir. The sled looked ready for their final push tomorrow, but Oscar was nowhere to be seen. Flora walked around the camp until she found what she was looking for. A trail of dog prints led out into the white emptiness. Flora swallowed hard, and then she followed them. She didn't hurry. She wasn't worried about being able to catch Oscar, but she wasn't looking forward to facing him. She didn't know what he would do when he saw her. Eventually, she spotted a dark shape in the moonlight. Oscar turned his head when he heard her behind him. Flora quieted her heart. She was determined not to leave without him and prepared to fight back even if she had to face his teeth. Leave me alone, he snarled when she walked up. Where are you going? It doesn't matter. Oscar set out again. His tail dragged in the snow. Flora kept in step beside him. She gathered her courage. We need you back there. You're lying, Oscar lunged at her and snapped his teeth next to her cheek. Flora fl flinched, but she didn't back away. Oscar growled into her ear. I don't deserve to be called a sled dog any longer. It's over for me. Oscar picked up the pace. Flora followed. Go back. He didn't turn to look at her. You're the only one now who can pull that sled to the main camp. I've wanted to be a sled pig for a long time, Flora said. I've put in a lot of practice and I'm, I'm glad I got the chance to prove myself. But it won't do any good because I can't find my way home. It's easy, Oscar answered. You'll be fine. Easy for you. I get all confused in this snow. I can't even walk in the straight line without getting turned around. You're just making excuses, pig. Elric can find his way. He's a smart kid. Oscar kept walking. I'm finished. Flora stepped in front and stopped him. She stared at him until he looked her in the eyes. You're not finished. You're sick. You're tired. You're overworked. You're not as young as you used to be, but you're not finished. Oscar sank into the snow. I was born and bred to be a sled dog. It's all I've ever known. It's all I was ever good for and now I can't outpole a pig. 
Flora took a deep breath. At least you were born and bred to have a job. You know what I was born and bred for. Now I have a chance to live and to be really useful. But it doesn't matter because I can't find my way and you won't help me. Where's your team spirit? My team left without me because I wasn't strong enough, Oscar snapped. You have a new team now, said Flora. We won't leave, with, leave without you. I won't. Sophia won't. Elric won't. Oscar blinked, and Flora recalled the first time she had seen him so long ago on the farm. It felt strange to be reminding a sled dog about team spirit, and it made her notice how different she was from the pig that left the farm in the back of a truck. Oscar, you're a dog, and your first instincts will always be dog-like. But in another way, you're not like other dogs. Flora stopped and watched his face when she was thinking about her next words. She wanted to say it just right. You're more than a dog, and I know this because of the way you've always looked out for me. Sophie is a cat, but she has been changing. I didn't tell you that. She came back for me when I couldn't go on. Flora lay down at Oscar's side, and then there's me, and I'm pretty sure you've noticed that I try hard not to be too pig-like. I think we're all aiming to be something better than what everyone thinks we were born to be, and that makes us even more of a team. We have to stick together. Oscar put his head on his paws. He wasn't moving. He wasn't even breathing, and his eyes had a glassy look. Oscar, said Flora softly. A chill suddenly went through her. Oscar, she shrieked and jumped to her feet. Oscar picked up his head and looked at her. I'm right here. Why are you screaming? Oh, Oscar, I thought you were gone. Flora choked out. Like gone forever? I'm not dead, you nut. Oscar got to his feet and began to walk toward camp. Come on, let's get back to the other and get some sleep. It's going to be a long day tomorrow. You changed your mind? Flora could hardly believe it. She trotted up beside him. Yes, and I'll change it again if you keep yakking. I've heard enough for one night, he muttered. Cat, but not a cat. Pig, but not a pig, he snorted. Dog, but not a dog. More than a dog, Flora corrected. They walked in silence until the tent came into view. Then Oscar stopped. About this business of pulling sleds, listen up. Flora stopped too. Was he going to start fighting again? You're doing it wrong. You're going to wear yourself out. Flora hadn't noticed that she was holding her breath, but she let it out now. Oscar continued, keep your head down when you're pulling. You're not a goat or a fancy pony. That's rule number one. Number two, rule number one, if you want to be a good sled dog, I mean puller, you got to get your sleep. I'll teach you rules three through 66 tomorrow. Yes, sir, Flora answered. They walked in silence again. Flora left nervous, but she had to know something. I understand that I need my sleep, but can I ask just one question? Rule number one, nothing is more important than sleep. Right, but I have a question that may be important. Okay, what? When we first met, you said that sled dogs go a little crazy. Does that happen at the end of the journey? Oscar stopped walking. I didn't say they go a little crazy. I said they have to be a little crazy to work this hard and enjoy it. Oh, Flora looked at Oscar, because I thought you meant they do a crazy little dance or something. Oscar stared at her as if a horn had suddenly sprouted from her forehead. Kind of a shimmy with some high stepping at the end. Flora summoned some energy and high stepped her tired body across the snow to demonstrate. Oscar shook his head as he started walking again. I don't know anything about that. What about a dance at the end to celebrate? Sled dogs don't dance. I'm a sled pig, Flora whispered. They were back at camp now and she didn't want to wake the others. It might be different for me. Oscar sighed. You just get up tomorrow ready to pull. He nosed into the tent. Flora looked up. Stars were extra bright tonight, and they shone and glimmered as if each one had something it wanted to say. Oscar poked his head out. Are you coming? That concludes chapter 35. This is chapter 36. Oscar was so stiff the next morning, Elric didn't even bother hooking him up. 
Take it easy for a while till you get better, boy, he said, and made a bed for the dog on top of the food boxes. If I had any choice, I wouldn't have worked you so hard. Flora paced herself at the front of the sled, or placed herself at the front of the sled. She was sore, but she had slept well and could feel Oscar's confidence over her like a warm blanket. I might as well make a harness for you today, pig, said Elric. It'll be easier on your neck. She was thankful for this, especially when she saw Elric struggling with the knots and blowing on his fingers to warm them up. When he was finished, the rope looped around her chest and between her front legs and up either side of her ribs. The whole arrangement fit over her coat and once they were moving, helped make the pulling much easier. Hike, shouted El Elric when everything was ready. Head down when you pull, barked Oscar from his place on the sled. Remember, rule number two, head down until you get up to speed. Let your shoulders do the work, not your neck. Flora smiled, put her head down, and pulled. Rule number three, pace yourself. Don't wear yourself out before you get where you're going. Flora eased up a bit and turned her head. I know someone who needs to practice that rule. Rule number four, do not turn around while you're pulling. And rule number five, do as I say and not as I do. From time to time, Oscar barked out directions and Flora would steer left to right to keep on course. Elric pulled from the front or rolled the rope up and pushed from the back. Just before nightfall, Flora heard Sophia give out a loud yow. I think I see something. Hey, deputy, look up ahead. Flora broke into a trot. The, uh, into a trot, the camp came into view. Elric hollered. Far ahead, Flora saw two specks come limping out of the snow shelter. They had done it. No one was going to die, not now anyway. Excitement and happiness bubbled inside her, and then she couldn't help it. Tiredness and sore muscles dropped away as she reared up on her hind legs and hopped. She trotted a bit more and then kicked her back legs to one side, then the other, behind her. Oscar started barking, dancing and shimming all you want, pig, you did it. Flora surged against the rope one last time, and she jumped and twisted in a crazy little dance as the sled coasted in. That concludes chapter 36.